schemes you can laugh when your schemes fall apart at the seams and life gets more exciting every passing day and love is either in your heart or on the way don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be <laughs> and as rich as you are, it's much better by far to be young and poor. Frank Wagner, if you should survive to 105, think of all you'll derive out of being This is the best part. You have a head start. If you are among the very young at heart. tales sure have happened for me. I wouldn't be standing on this stage today if I hadn't missed a train many, many years ago. I was standing on the platform at the Westport train station when a woman I hardly knew came over to me and said, why don't you come over to Mario's with me? I'd like to introduce you to my friend. He's a wonderful musician. So I left the train station and walked across the street. I had no idea how this decision would change my life. <laughs> Love is a necessary evil. A very contrary, hereditary evil. Can't live with it, can't live without it, can't do a doggone thing about it. You want the pleasure, you gotta take the pain. necessary evil an evolutionary interplanetary evil your heart's pounding you get excited play with a flame and you're ignited time out for crying here comes a load of pain embrace who needs it no one but the whole human race cause love is a necessary evil a very arbitrary extraordinary evil Natural things that women and men do can't be changed. There's nothing you can do. Love is a necessary. 
necessary evil Since time began The wisest of men have found This evil makes the world go round Evil, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, not all the time. I have very fond memories of my very first romance. We slow danced the months of July and August away to the beautiful sounds of jo Joe Stafford. So long the Nile Watch the sunrise from a tropic isle Just remember, darling, all the while You belong to me See the marketplace in old Algiers Send me photographs and souvenirs Just remember when a dream appears You belong to me freshman year at Dartmouth College, and I went back to Erasmus Hall High School. It was my first heartbreak, but I wouldn't call it evil. <laughs> it was the uptight 1950s, and I was headed for marriage and children, and I complied. I married a good man. I had, <laughs> I had three beautiful children. <laughs> I got my B.A. and my M.R.S. at the same time, my missus. And after, after, after a number of years, we agreed to disagree, but we parted on very friendly terms. But love for children is eternal, and at the moment, I need a tissue. Does anybody have a tissue? I didn't bring up a tissue. I never, what's that over there on your face? Something you used to, to, to wipe it off? <laughs> Anyone is welcome to come up with a tissue who might have a tissue. I'm not proud. much prefer me without a running nose. <laughs> well, love for children is eternal. Look up. 
up there, high above us, in a sky of blackest silk. See how round, like a cookie. See how white, as white as milk. Call it the moon, my son. Say moon. Sounds like your spoon, my son. Can you say it? New word today. Say moon. Near the moon, brightly shining. See those shining sparks of light? Each one new, each one burning through the darkness of the night. We call them stars, my son. Say stars. That one is Mars, my son. Can you say it? New words today say stars as they dance all around us, playing starry eyed games. Who would think it astounds us simply naming their names? Turn around from the skies now. Turn around and look at me. There's a light in my eyes now and a word for what you see. We call it love, my son. Say love. So hard to say, my son, it gets harder. New words today, we'll learn to say. Say moon, say stars, say love. Those children were pretty grown up when I met that musician at Mario's. <laughs> and ten, day, uh, ten, 10 days, 10 months later, we were married. And the singing began. And 10 years later, we split. <laughs> but I took the music with me. <laughs> Every time I get a divorce, someone tells me to sing this song. <laughs> leave you, leave you, how could I leave you? How could I go it alone? Could I wave the years away with a quick goodbye? How do you wipe tears away? When your eyes are dry, <laughs> sweetheart, lover, could I recover? Give up the joys I have known. Not to fetch your pills again every day at five. Not to give those dinners for 10 elderly men from the UN. How could I survive? Could I leave you? and your shelves of the world's best books and the evenings of martyred looks, cryptic sighs, 
sullen glares from those injured eyes. Could I leave the quips with a sting? Jokes with a sneer? Passionless lovemaking once a year. Leave the lies ill-concealed and the wounds never healed and the game's not worth winning. And wait, I'm just beginning. <laughs> what? Leave you? Leave you? How could I leave you? What would I do on my own? Putting thoughts of you aside in the south of France. <gasps> would I think of suicide? <laughs> Darling, shall we dance? Could I live through the pain on a terrace in Spain? Would it pass? It would pass. Could I bury my rage with a boy half your age in the grass? Get your ass. But I've done that already. Or didn't you know love? Tell me, how could I leave? When I left long ago, love, could I leave you? No, the point is, could you leave me? Well, I guess you could leave me the house, leave me the flat, leave me the brocks and chagalls and all that. You could leave me the stocks for sentiment's sake and 90% of the money you make and the rugs and the cooks. Darling, you take the drugs, Angel. You take the drugs, honey. I'll take the grand sugar. You take the spinach. And all of our friends and just wait a goddamn minute. Oh, leave you, leave you. How could I leave you? Sweetheart, I have to confess. Could I leave you? Yes, will I leave you? Will I leave you? Guess. in the singles world again. <laughs> and an actor friend of mine said, you gotta go see my psychic. Well, of course I did, and I had a good time. And, <laughs> and then we decided, to, after the session, we decided to go out and have a drink. So we went to Sardi's, and as we walked into the little bar, a very attractive man turned around from the, his bar stool and said, can I buy you ladies a drink? Well, <laughs> he did. Tell me, is love still a popular suggestion? or merely an obsolete art. Forgive me for asking this simple question. I'm unfamiliar with his heart. I'm a stranger here myself. Why is it wrong to murmur I adore him? When it's shamefully obvious, I do. Does love him embarrass him? Or does it bore him? I'm only waiting for my cue. I'm a stranger here myself. I dream of a day, of a gay, warm day, with my face between his hands. Have I missed the path? Have I gone astray? 
I ask, but no one understands. Love me or leave me, that seems to be the question. I don't know what tactics to use. But if he should offer a personal suggestion, how could I possibly refuse when I'm a stranger here myself? Tell me, tell the stranger, by curiosity goaded, is there really any danger that love is now outmoded? I'm interested especially in knowing why you waste it. True romance is so fleshly. With what have you replaced it? What is your latest foible? Is gin rummy more exquisite? Is skiing more enjoyable? For heaven's sake, what is it? I can't believe that love has lost its glamour. That passion is really passé. If gender is just a term in grammar, how could I ever find my way when I'm a stranger here myself? How can he ignore my available condition? Why these Victorian views? You see here before you a woman with a mission. I must discover the key to his ignition. And then if he should make a diplomatic proposition, how could I possibly refuse? When I'm a stranger here myself. <laughs> Love is funny or it's sad or it's quiet, or it's mad. It's a good thing, or it's bad, but beautiful. Beautiful to take a chance. And if you fall, you fall. And I'm thinking, I wouldn't mind at all. Love is tearful, or it's gay. It's a problem, or it's play. It's a heartache. Beautiful, and I'm thinking if you were mine, I'd never let you go, and that would be but beautiful. I know. Thank you.
is a problem or it's play is a heartache either way but beautiful and I'm thinking if you But beautiful, that would be beautiful, that would be but beautiful, I know. the 1990s and I was so restless I was just totally restless in this grab bag that I call my mind. What am I doing alone on the shelf? Ain't it a shame? No one to blame but myself. Which way is clear? When you've lost your way year after year, do I keep falling in for just the kick of it, staggering through the thin and thick of it, hating each old and tired trick of it, know what I am, I'm good and sick of it, where am I going? Why do I care? Run to the Bronx or Washington Square, no matter where I run, I meet myself there, looking inside me. What do I see? Anger and hope and doubt. What is it all about? And where am I going? spirit brought me back into New York City, my hometown, and the upper, upper west side, <laughs> upper West End Avenue, where I, made, I, I met my first voice teacher and my first music director, Rod Derefinko. And after a while, we had a show, and we took it to Don't Tell Mama, where the impresario of cabaret Sidney Meyer gave me my first chance. And we opened my first show in 1993 at Don't Tell Mama. And it was wonderful. Wonderful, marvelous. Sydney cared for me. Suffle nice, it's paradise. It's what I longed to see. Wonderful. 
wonderful. It's marvelous. That city cared for me. Did mentors and teachers came into my life. It just happened, and the very first one was Elizabeth Parrish. She was a, a Broadway performer and a close associate of Stella Adler's. And she brought with her Marjorie Beto, a Bob Fosse dancer. And the two of them directed my next two shows at Danny's. And my first show at Danny's Cabaret opened with All That Jazz. Come on, babe, we're gonna paint the town. And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car. I know a whoopee spot where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl at all. That jazz. Woo. from here. that, our very own Beth Holland introduced me to Miriam Fond and her wonderful music theater and drama workshops, where I spent many happy years. <laughs> and, and, 
an award-winning singer gave me a song which, uh, which Miriam directed. And uh, well, the, the song is outdated now, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't want me a poor young mechanic. Not as long as there's a billionaire named Max. Cause good little girls go to heaven. But smart little girls go to Bergdorf's, to Bendel's, to Bloomies, to Neiman's and Sachs. When the rent's due, I don't start to panic. Cause I've got a landlord I've taught to relax. <laughs> oh, good little girls go to heaven. But smart little girls go to Bergdorf's, to Bendel's, to Bloomies, to Demons and Sacks. I hope I don't care what I owe. Things will clear up, I know. I'll always draw a crowd with what I've been endowed with. Every tycoon believes he's titanic. And the search for talent comes right off the tax. So good little girls go to heaven. But smart little girls go to Bergdorf's, to Bendel's, to Bloomies, to Demons and Sacks. When I make Mr. X quite ecstatic, he has learned that I want more than merely praise. Cause good little girls go to heaven, but smart little girls go to Van Cleef and Opel, to Tiffany's and to Cartier's. I'm bad, I'm a femaleish cad, but since sex is a fad, I'll make hay while it's current. It's not too abhorrent. If my meaning's a bit too emphatic, you get more with yeses than you do with nays. <laughs> oh, good little girls go to heaven. But smart little girls go to Van Cleef and Arpel, to Tiffany's and to Cartier's. <laughs> I won't be a suburban commuter, not as long as there's canard line on the sea. Cause good little girls go to Bronxville, but smart little girls go to Deauville, to Trueville, to Venice, to Nice and Capri. <laughs> when I deal with mankind, travel broadens the mind. What's frowned on in Kenosha, in Paris, is kosher. <laughs> if the masculine gender was neuter, I'd be secretary of the PTA. Cause good little girls go to analysts, but smart little girls go to Deauville, to Trueville, to Venice, to Nice, to Bergdorf, to Bendos, to Bloomies, to Saks, to Van Cleef and Arpel, to Tiffany's, and to Cartier. <laughs> My last show was right before the pandemic. And the late Tex Arnold uh, played, and Sally Mays directed it. And one day, Sally gave me a song, and she said, Sandy, honey, this song is you. This is your story. Sort of. marriage we shared the household chores of course we understood each other's feelings right down to the day of our sensible divorce 
I didn't ask him for a penny. I'd had my liberated training. So off he went with his hair of bronze to find a life like Khalil Gibrons. I got my rest from the drugs he did. He got his quest, I got the kid, and no. I'm not complaining. So I set off to be a writer, a modern mother on her own. I wrote up happenings at galleries, turned down jobs with salaries, stayed freelance and alone. Fought the battles of the 60s, which you recall were rather draining. When men were thick, I hit the fray, became a prick, got equal pay. I faced down chauvinistic slobs, I won the fights, improved the jobs, and oh, I'm not complaining. husband found himself his ashram, lost 40 pounds and went through hell. Then one day he came back from limbo, found himself some bimbo, and moved to New Rochelle. <laughs> I raised my son and I had lovers. My choices sometimes need explaining. I'd meet some jock, my friends would scoff. He'd stay a while, I'd drive him off. I kept my space, preserved my turf. Six months, I'd send him back to surf. And oh, I was not complaining. Now my son's halfway through college. I pay tuition like a fine. I'm still this feisty freelance writer, resume well honed at a well-toned umpty nine. I find that getting work is harder. Each job I want takes more campaigning. And the sweet young things who hire me now, those MBAs making 90 thou, who smile and ask what I have done when they got their jobs from the fights I won. They should all stay home and have babies. But I'm not complaining. my window as I watch Jersey growing dim. I feel this troubling emotion summed up in this notion. I wish I'd stayed with him. Lord knows each day with him was madness as I have spent my life maintaining. But more and more I recall the joy, my golden dreamer, my lost boy. Our life was life in the twilight zone, but no worse than a life alone. And oh, well, I chose my way, and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining.
honoring. In fact, I'm celebrating. Uh, <laughs> I have been so lucky to have the most wonderful, talented people help me along in this musical journey of mine, and I'm going to mention some of them now. Now, no, <laughs> I am, and I'm very, I'm, I'm really uh, feel that I have, my life has been blessed by these people. Marilyn May, Tex Arnold and Sally Mays, Miriam Fond and Woody Regan. Angela Pietro Pinto is in the audience here tonight. <laughs> I have to mention your, mention your name more often to get applause here. <laughs> and, and of course, none of it would have been possible without the marvelous Sidney Meyer. I want to, I want to thank you up there, um, Mary, for the sounds and the lights. You did a great job. Thank you. I want to thank my gifted, my gifted director of tonight's show, Michelle Grace. Hi, <laughs> Michelle. And my wonderful musicians, Frank Wagner, <laughs> Chris Coogan, I guess I have another song or two. <laughs> comes once in a lifetime take each day and gather the rosebuds in it fill each minute every day that comes comes once in a lifetime think of now tomorrow is waiting in the wings who knows what it brings while tomorrow's waits the fire begins and day to day in Brooklyn or China across the bay only once comes this particular sky only once this precious hour will fly only once in a lifetime today comes by so live 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 today special friend of, of mine gave me my finale. He can't be here tonight because he's conducting the, the show at Wicked a few blocks away, Dan Mishike. <laughs> but he's here in spirit. Some, somebody did all right for herself tonight. Cha-cha-cha. Somebody had quite a night for herself tonight. Cha-cha-cha. Somebody sure surprised herself, hardly recognized herself. Someone forgot herself. Someone was not herself. Someone's alive and kicking again tonight. Cha cha cha. Somebody felt like a chicken again tonight. Cha cha cha. Somebody forgot she was wearing shoes tonight. Forgot her lines a few times tonight. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, had a good time tonight. Cha cha cha. Somebody could have stayed at her home tonight. Cha, cha, cha. Who knows what she might have made at her home tonight. Cha, cha, cha. So 
somebody sure surprised herself, hardly recognized herself. Somebody took a swing. Somebody still can sing. And the pain she could ride to a hundred and five. Think of all you derive out of being alive. And here is the best part. You have the head start if you are among the very young cha 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 at heart.
get out. So. God, Mom, I love you. You are amazing tonight, and I look up to you. And frankly, I could never have done that in a million years. So I don't even know what to say, but I love you, and I'm so proud of you. And you did a fantastic job tonight. So you're in charge of the next was... <laughs> That was the most amazing show. I am so impressed. I hope you'll do more. I had a ball. So impressive. Jackie? You, you said you were taking the mic. We love you, Mom. What do you think of the show? Say something, Jackie. Well, I'm going to tell you, I absolutely love the show because I thought it was the, the, the from soup to nuts from the beginning of Sandra's life, from the beginning to the end. And several people I asked that weren't quite sure that that's what it was about, but it was to me. And she is just the most amazing woman, and she inspires me to be just like her. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is off the cover, whatever's in your heart. Okay. Well, my name is Jean Gennussi, and I'm five days older than Sadra. And we are wonderful friends because we both sing cabaret. We both love to go to Canyon Ranch. We're both writing memoirs. And she's so inspiring. And I love going to cabaret shows. And I believe this is the best, most heartfelt cabaret show I've ever seen in my life. And I'm so thankful for her friendship and her loyalty and her skills. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you much. Oh my gosh. Do you want to be in it with me? Step in it. I love it. We could not stop smiling this entire yep. show. Smiled the whole time. Like we had just as much fun as it seemed like she was having. It was fantastic. The joy up there was electrifying and we were laughing and cackling and we definitely took down at least three lines she said yeah. um, for posterity. Iconic. Iconic line. Iconic. We love you, Sandra. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>
get a testimony? Once again, you you knocked it out of the park, and you made me cry. You made me laugh. Your songs always touch my heart, and I'm so happy for you tonight. I love you so much, and I'm so lucky to have you as my mother-in-law. You just nailed it tonight. Congratulations. Beautiful. That was perfect. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, grab him. What's that? What, what is it? Hey, Michael. Hi, so, Michael. So How are you? So my dad. Whatever you decide, What's that? Off the cuff, whatever's in your heart. Okay. Take one step back. One step back. Hey, mom. Thank you for another wonderful night. You're terrific. You're amazing. You have a heart. And that is three quarters of the battle in this life. And thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you, man. Thank you. When I think of my grandmother, I think of somebody who has made the most of every single opportunity that serendipity has offered her. And serendipity has been incredibly generous. My grandmother has found in every human relationship that has passed through her life, inspiration and joy and fun and excitement. And that has inspired me my whole life. I adore my grandmother as a grandson but I also cherish her really as a friend. And it's been really a great privilege to have you be a part of my life. It has been extraordinary watching you flourish and grow and transform. And I, I love you from the bottom of my heart. You know the sound bite. Thank you, man. That was perfect. Beautiful. Hey, get over here. Hey, man. I'm Michael. Yes, Filming for Sandra. Good to meet you, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Grandma, my brother talked for probably like 20 minutes, so I'm going to make this short and simple. You were phenomenal. You just spoke from your heart and from your years of life experience. And when I think of you, the one word that comes to me is fearlessness. You're just, you just go for it and you're unafraid of anything. And that is why everything that has happened to you in your life has happened to you. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so honored to be your grandson. You were phenomenal tonight, and I love you. Thank you. Uh, 
Hey, Grandma. Uh, great job tonight. I really enjoyed it, especially the storytelling um, from you know writer to writer. Fantastic job. Uh, Rachel came too, and she enjoyed it as well. She called you a hustler, so that's great. <laughs> anyway, uh, love you, and uh, I will see you very soon. All right, peace. Thank you.